So welcome back guys. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different or maybe a lot different than most of the videos on this channel. This video is gonna revolve around what you see in my hand right here. And of course, what you see in my hand here is a sawmill blade. And this blade is really the heart of the machine that you see behind me here. You've seen this machine on this channel and other machines on lots of other channels, I'm sure. And the purpose of these machines, of course, is to take logs that might otherwise be useless and saw those logs into lumber that can be used for something. But of course, with everything else, there is a little bit of mystery to these blades right here. Where do they come from? How are they made? Well, very recently I was able to take a trip up to Southeastern Metals in Woodbury, Georgia, and my friend Dallas was able to show me exactly how these things are put together. Welcome back guys, my name is Wes and this is Dallas this Walker. Is, this is Dallas and we are here at Southeastern Metals and today we're going to see how sawmill blades are made. Awesome. So naturally there are a lot of different machines that require different lengths of blades. So the blades arrive in massive rolls in boxes at the factory and at that point they're put into a machine that cuts them to length. This machine cuts the blades to the exact length of what it tells you on the invoice. And what it does is it adds a little bit for the welder. Because the welder, of course, when it welds, it's going to take a quarter inch off the blade. So you're actually going to add a quarter inch to that blade every time it cuts. So when it welds, it's going to equal, the two spacing is going to come out exactly right. That one's not set up yet. And what I do is, uh, I don't want any trash in there no matter what. Because every little piece of anything you get in there is going to make a bad weld. So we try to clean that blade as much as we can with our hands. Any oil, dust, or debris, I want it off there. I don't want any debris in there. And that, this is a blower. Let's actually blow anything up. Put pedal there that clamps these clamps down 3,000 pounds of pressure. Okay, so all the electricity comes up through here and then it fuses that blade together. So this is one of the parts of the process that's always been a mystery to me. You just saw a blade welded together very much like the weld that you see in this blade right here. And I have never quite understood how they can weld a blade together and then stick it on a sawmill like this sawmill and it go around and around however many hundreds of times per hour and the weld not break because of course welds are very brittle things. Well. You're about to see a process that they call annealing and annealing is basically taking a piece of metal and heating it up to a certain temperature and allowing that metal to cool off kind of in a controlled fashion and basically what it does is it takes a very brittle weld like this and makes it flexible and that's why these things can go around and around and around thousands and thousands of times over the course of their lives and not break in the weld and you'll see right here If you don't do that, it'll become very brittle. It'll be like a real brittle weld if you don't do that. And then what I do on this rock is I grind the back, tell a little kit in the back. Yep. Just smooth it out. And just make it smooth. That's it. Oh, 
this is what I call dog legs. Sometimes they're a little bit twisted to get in the box. And I wrap them like that. So that way, they're like that. So they're a little offset. And they can get in the box. Since they're a little bit longer than a 13-2. A 13-2 is going to be a kidney shape. Which is a simple shape. But this is a dog leg shape. Is what we call it. And it's a little off center. Okay. So like I said, off center, this is sticking out more. And this will fit right in the box. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Dallas has a pretty cool process of testing these blades. So basically he wants to test these blades to make sure that the weld is strong enough, that the settings on the welder and the annealing process are absolutely correct. He says that the weld should be 90, at least 90% of the strength of the rest of the blade before he wants them to go out of his factory. Ideally, he wants the blade itself to break before the weld breaks. So let's check out the tester that he uses. All right, so we welded the blade together. Now yeah. tell me what this machine does. This machine twist tests the brake. And the best way is to take a blade with no weld in it, twist it till it breaks, calculate how many turns that was. Rule of thumb is if you can get 60% of the turns with a weld in it and it break, you're good. 60% plus. Mm -hmm. Here we like to see 80% and 90% or even outside the weld, meaning 100% is our goal so we like to see it we i really like my guys to see it break outside the well and we do that we're so good to go right and that's what i try to do gotcha but sometimes we get in here and we're like we can't get it at least it's 90 percent fired up and let's go right and then we'll do like 40 or 50 blades and then we'll twist again because we're a little nervous and do it again to make sure because we really don't need broken wells going out of our factory because that is the worst thing we can possibly do in this company so basically your goal in on this machine is to stress test it and mm -hmm. see where it breaks and if it breaks outside the weld you're we you're good. Well, good okay that's 100 percent. okay but i don't know if it will Broken the wheel. That's about 90% though. See how it's nice and twisting here? One of the cool things about this place is they didn't only deal with bandsaw blades like this one. There was a guy there named James who had a business where he dealt with circular saw blades and you're about to see him working on a pretty big saw blade. And this is not like a sawmill saw blade. This is one of those blades that you see on the machines that clear out the power lines. It's basically a that really huge machine with a big saw blade on the end of a giant pole. I'm not sure what they're called, but here's James working on one of those blades. try to get all the tipping done in you know one day so I can get the headache out of the way. So basically what you're doing here is you're soldering carbide teeth on to blades that are going to be used on boom saws and saws like they clear power lines with yeah, and that right. kind of thing. Lines Transmission lines. Okay. And then uh, those machines right there will sharpen the sides and the face and the top down to, you know, pre uh, the right angles essentially. Okay. And, uh, and that'll make it actually cut. You know? Gotcha. But usually when I get these blades, unless something happened, I usually just knock all the tips out because they destroy these blades. No, I'm sure. I've, <laughs> yeah. I've seen them work. They seem to brutalize these oh, poor things. Yeah. And a lot of times if you go trying to save money and cut corners, somebody's going to end up getting hurt. Uh -huh. And uh, it just ain't worth all that. Yeah.
Well guys, that's pretty well gonna do it for this video, a little bit of a different video, and I do hope that you found it uh, educational or entertaining or maybe even both. And a big shout out to Dallas and the crew at Southeastern Metals for allowing me to come up and get in their way just a little bit and film the process of how bandsaw blades and even some circular saw blades are made and shipped out the door to the customer. I'm gonna leave Dallas's information and James's information down in the description of this video. If you have any bandsaw blade needs or apparently circular saw blade needs as well uh, you can contact them and they should be able to take care of you um, i just got done milling about 1300 board feet of pine lumber with one of dallas's blades and i can attest that they are very good blades and that the cost was really good too i thought they had a very fair price on their blades so that's going to do it for this one thank you all for watching and uh, i'll see you all on the next one